new music composed for the concert by a uh, well-known Upper Peninsula musician, Evan Primo, as well as a piece called Elements. The Boreal Chamber Symphony will make its debut on Lake Superior Day in Marquette, Michigan, in a dramatic concert to protect America's largest freshwater lake. Haunting French horns, the soothing sounds of water, a thundering storm, and flowing interpretive dance using rocks, sand, and other items found along the Lake Superior shoreline are all part of the event entitled Concert for Lake Superior, People, Place, Purpose. With a view of Lake Superior, the concert will begin at 7 p.m. on Sunday, July 15, 2007 at the Upfront and Company restaurant in Marquette, preceded by a social hour at 6. Mary Biolo, also dance artist uh, Maria Formolo. During a press conference on the shores of Lake Superior, conductor Craig Randall Johnson of Minneapolis, Minnesota, explained some of the details of the concert. More perhaps deeper metaphysical uh, aspects of life around and relating to Lake Superior. The Boreal Chamber Symphony includes top musicians from around the Great Lakes region. Conductor Craig Randall Johnson and those musicians want to bring awareness to ecological issues. We have only one planet to live on and here we're living by uh, the largest lake on the planet, freshwater body. Uh, we rely on the lake and we gain uh, spiritual uh, nourishment from the lake as well as economic benefit. The concert is sponsored by the Superior Watershed Partnership and the Cedar Tree Institute, Marquette nonprofits that founded the Earthkeeper Initiative in 2004. The event will have a water and environment theme. In 2004, the Lake Superior Binational Forum designated the third Sunday in each July as Lake Superior Day in the United States and Canada. The concert is free and everyone is welcome. But donations are encouraged. All proceeds will be used for environment projects involving the immense Lake Superior watershed. The Lake Superior watershed is, is very large and it makes up most of the UP where we live. And we have, we depend on this water for uh, drinking, for recreation, we enjoy swimming in its waters, we, we enjoy fishing in the rivers that feed into Lake Superior. So. At the Watershed Partnership, we care about the bigger picture of the water. This is, this is our resource. This is every day we, we use the water from Lake Superior, and so we have to protect it. And why do you think it's important for people to support Lake Superior? Um, in addition to being able to hear incredible, amazing music uh, about Lake Superior and on the shores of Lake Superior, you can also learn about different projects that are happening around um, the UP to protect Lake Superior. Um, and all of the donations that day will go to these projects uh, that, are, that are working to protect Lake Superior. Marquette Community Foundation also supported this project. How much did you guys give? Um, it was $1,500. It was the requested amount. And why do you think the concert's important? Well, we really are a true believer in the community and in, the, um, in the Lake Superior. And so we wanted this um, venue to help support um, the numerous groups that are helping um, keep Lake Superior as beautiful as it is. All donations are tax deductible and go to the Lake Superior Defense Fund. Carl Lindquist, Executive Director of the Superior Watershed Partnership, said by offering the free concert, he hopes that people will contribute to the Lake Superior Defense Fund. That way, the Watershed Partnership can expand and continue their successful Great Lakes protection programs. Lindquist said the concert is also a way to show that we all have an important role in protecting Lake Superior. The master of ceremonies for the concert is WLUC TV6 personality Carl Bonak, the TV station's meteorologist who's been in the Upper Peninsula for 20 years. At over 1,300 feet, Lake Superior is the deepest and coldest of the Great Lakes. Its shoreline stretches over 2,700 miles, including the countless islands, and is fed by over 200 rivers. The concert was inspired by the Baltic Sea Festival, which partners classical musicians with environment groups. 
Johnson remembers the exact minute the Lake Superior concert idea was born, 1.27 p.m. on September 14, 2006, at a Marquette Cafe. The Lake Superior concert idea was born as Johnson and a friend were discussing cultural offerings and the state of music in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and the annual Baltic Sea Festival. Now, you've conducted lots and lots of concerts. What makes this particularly different? The members of the orchestra are are very strong participants in creating and presenting the program uh, from a French horn duo, uh, a rather lengthy piece, and the creation of uh, the new pieces. There's a lot of energy coming from many people, most of whom are based here in the Central Upper Peninsula. Conductor Johnson was the music director of the 2005 Finn Grand Fest Symphony Concert in Marquette and the upcoming July 27th Finn Fest Concert in Ashtabula, Ohio. Johnson has conducted many symphonies, including the Marquette Symphony. Conductor Johnson says the concert will be a renewal of energy and hope toward doing positive work for the environment. The classical concert will reach many extremes, including traditional works from Mozart and Handel. Modern and classical music will be performed, including a new composition by UP native Evan Primo, who has been commissioned for the concert. Primo began his career at the tender age of eight with his family's folk band Whitewater. Primo's composition, Fall Storm on Lake Superior, was inspired by a chapter in a friend Lon Emmerich's book called The Superior Peninsula, Seasons in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Primo said Emmerich's book remembers shipwrecks during fall storms like the Edmund Fitzgerald that sank in 1975 during the gales of November. Percussionists Carrie Biolo and James A. Strain and dancer Maria Formolo are premiering a performance named Elements. It uses rock, sand, and driftwood from Lake Superior. At the press conference, one of the concert sponsors, the Cedar Tree Institute, was represented by Tom Reed. Why does the Cedar Tree Institute think it's important to save and protect Lake Superior? Well, it's certainly at the headwaters of all of the other uh, lakes downstream from here. Everything's downstream from Lake Superior, and uh, it's certainly a unique natural resource. Tell me about some of the mutual activities between uh, the Cedar Tree Institute and the Watershed Partnership, and just how you guys work together. The Cedar Tree Institute uh, provides a connection to uh, differing groups that wouldn't normally uh, find themselves in the same room. Uh, we work closely with the Keweenaw Bay Indian Tribe, the Lake Superior Watershed Partnership, and the juvenile uh, court system in the Marquette County area. For instance, we've been doing a wild rice restoration project called the Monoman Project for the last uh, three years, and will continue this year. We go out with kids from the juvenile court system and we uh, scope out prospects for uh, planting sites and then we plant these sites. The Superior Watershed Partnership and the Cedar Tree Institute have partnered on numerous environment projects over the last decade, including, but not limited to, stream restoration, controlling invasive species, restoring native plants, stormwater management, dune restoration, Great Lakes monitoring, wild rice restoration, erosion control, and energy conservation. Partners in those projects include the Marquette County Juvenile Court, the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community, and 140 UP churches and temples representing nine faith traditions. Those nine faith traditions are Catholic, Episcopal, Lutheran, Presbyterian, United Methodist Church, Unitarian Universalist, Baha'i, Jewish, and Zen Buddhist. The bishops and leaders of those faith traditions signed the Earthkeeper Covenant in 2004, pledging to actively protect the environment and reach out to American Indian tribes. In 2006, the Earthkeepers received the highest Great Lakes Protection Award from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and Canada. For the last decade, the Superior Watershed Partnership and the Cedar Tree Institute have collaborated on numerous environment projects, including annual Earthkeeper clean sweeps that have broken EPA household hazardous waste collection records three years running. The annual Earth Day collection across the Upper Peninsula has properly disposed or recycled about 370 tons of household hazardous waste, including pharmaceuticals, 
old and broken computers and cell phones, household poisons, lead-based paint, mercury, and vehicle batteries. So please attend the debut of the Boreal Chamber Symphony. The free concert to benefit Lake Superior will be held on Sunday, July 15, 2007. It begins at 7 p.m. at Upfront & Company in Marquette, Michigan. If you can't attend, please donate to the Lake Superior Defense Fund. For more information, visit the Superior Watershed Partnership website. I'm Craig Peterson, and you're watching EarthKeeper TV.